Hi all, welcome to the CA classroom. Today let's discuss the topic AS20 earnings per share. Now what is this? Let's say for example, the total company share capital is 10 lakh shares of 10 each which comes to 1 crore. Now, why do you invest in a company to get share of the profits from the company? Now, every year when company makes so much of net profit, you will want to know what is your share in that net profit. Whether you receive it as dividend or not as secondary, out of the total earnings that company earns in a year, how much belongs to my shareholders which goes into my reserves. So, the shareholder will want to know for every share he is invested in the company, how much rupees he has earned in that year. So, it is mandatory every year for a company to report something in the financial statements in the face of the profit and loss account and balance sheet known as earnings per share. How do you compute earnings per share? Your numerator will be total earnings. Total earnings divided by total number of shares. This will be a simple formula for you to first understand. Let's say there is a cake of 1 kg and 5 people have to share it. My numerator will be the cake and denominator will be 5 people and we will split it equally. So same way to find earnings per 1 share, how much I am earning, total earnings divided by total number of shares. But your numerator and denominator is not that simple. No. You need to understand what to consider in the numerator and what to consider in the denominator. First, let's see the numerator. The numerator is supposed to be profit after tax. Profit after tax as per your Schedule 3 financial statements. Simple. Do not make any changes to this. The question might have details like this profit was computed when the company used FIFO method. However, if they use weighted average method, profit would be something else. No, I don't care. What is the reported profit in my financial statements? After paying your interest, after depreciation, after paying the taxes, what is the balance profit? After settling all the stakeholders, what is the reported profit? No adjustments to be done. Just take the reported profit in the financial statements except for one adjustment. I will reduce from this preference dividend. I will reduce from this preference dividend only. If question says, asks you to reduce preference dividend, you will reduce it. Otherwise, if question is silent, check if this preference dividend is a cumulative preference dividend or non-cumulative preference dividend. If it is a non-cumulative preference shares, then do not reduce preference dividend if question does not specify that. However, if they are cumulative preference shares, whether question specifies or not, you will reduce preference dividend. So take the reported profit after tax and reduce the preference dividend to find your numerator which will go over there. Next, we will be discussing about what will be denominator. Now, understand total number of shares within a year can move for a company. Is it always consistent throughout the year? Let's say opening shares, number of shares 15 lakhs, closing also 15 lakhs, no new shares, no buyback, nothing. Then very simple, take 15 lakhs as denominator, close it. However, whenever there is movement in number of shares for various reasons, what can it be? Buyback, bonus, rights, etc. What is the number of shares I have to take? Should I take opening value, closing value? or average to find the correct earnings per share. So now in AS20 we have completed to find EPS what will be the numerator. Numerator will be 
profit after tax what is reported in the financial statements less preference dividend based on cumulative or non cumulative in the next section let's see what will be the denominator and what adjustments we have to make to it in the previous section we had discussed what is the numerator for the formula now let us look at the denominator denominator will be number of shares we can have three options opening shares closing shares or average shares no. remember guys the numerator is nothing but profit earned and reported as per your financial statements is this profit earned in the period beginning or middle or end it is earned throughout the period and hence i cannot use opening shares or closing shares i can only use average number of shares again when you come to average average can be simple average or it can be weighted average which one to consider no let's say the company on 2 lakhs in the first few months 5 lakhs in the next few months and 7 lakhs in the last few months totally earning about 14 lakhs now let's say beginning of the year company had 10 lakh shares outstanding which was there for 6 months after 6 months company had issued additionally 20 lakh shares which was there for the last 6 months no 10 lakh shareholders were part of the company for the entire year these 20 lakhs are only part for the last 6 months if you take a simple average opening is 10 plus closing is 30 lakhs opening plus closing 10 plus 30 40 by 2 you will get 20 lakh shares but if you see beginning the profits was lower towards the end profits kept increasing because company infused some capital so simple average is not right you need to compute weighted average number of shares i have to give benefit to the shareholders who were there for the entire year so how do i compute weighted average 10 lakh shares were there for entire 12 months hence 10 lakhs 20 lakh shares were there only for 6 months hence that becomes into 6 by 12 which is again 10 lakhs and the total comes to 20 lakhs this is how you compute weighted average number of shares but your sums will have new issue again buyback reduction increase all you have to do is compute number of shares how many months they are outstanding number of shares how many months they are outstanding and find the weighted average number of shares which are outstanding for the year this is how you compute your denominator therefore your earnings per share the formula will be profit reported profits for the year less preference dividend if any divided by weighted average number of equity shares now let us look at few cases that will affect the computation of your earnings per share in the previous section we had seen what is the numerator and denominator for computing earnings per share now let us look at some adjustments which will be made let us say throughout the year company makes different types of share issues one bucket i can categorize it as those issues where fund inflow is nil there is no inflow of funds but number of shares are moving example bonus issue consolidation of shares or stock split in all these cases number of shares will change but fund inflow is zero therefore new funds is zero but denominator will be increasing or decreasing second fund inflow is that there. there is available fund inflow but this is not proportional to the number of shares meaning market price can be 50 but i am issuing shares at 40 therefore increase in fund is not proportional to the increase in number of shares example rights issue 
So second case is that fund inflow is not proportional to the number of shares issued. Third case is where new funds issued to third parties where fund inflow is proportional to the number of shares. How do we deal with each of this case? Coming to this, the earnings will increase corresponding to the increase in number of shares. So there is not much to be done over here. But for case 1 and case 2, there is no fund inflow. But there are more people coming to share the same profit. Second case, fund is increasing by a little amount. But people are increasing by more to share the profit. How do we compute EPS in these cases is what we are going to see next. Case 1. Let us look at bonus issue or those cases where there is no fund inflow. Now, because my fund is going to remain the same, I have the same amount of money to do the business. So, my earnings, let's say my profit after tax is 50 lakhs in both the years because I have the same money to do the business. However, in year 2, company has made a bonus issue. So now let us see number of shareholders. Let's say company has 10 lakh shares and bonus issue is made at 1 share for every shareholder. So they will now get totally there will be 20 lakh shareholders in year 2, 10 lakhs plus 10 lakhs. Let us compute the earnings per share. Year 1 will be 50 lakhs divided by 10 lakhs which is rupees 5 and year 2 will be 50 lakhs divided by 20 lakhs which is rupees is rupees 2.50. Now, a normal user earnings is going to remain the same but company has issued bonus shares so number of shares have increased in the year number 2. So, when he compares the earnings for the previous year to the current year, what he will think is earnings has decreased. But what has happened is number of shares have increased. So what the standard is saying is you need to prepare an adjusted income statement where when I am reporting in year number 2, I have to regroup shares of previous year, my comparables as if bonus is issued in this year. So this year also I will change it to 20 lakhs. As if bonus is issued in year 1. So my EPS for year 1 will also be 2.5. So when he looks at the previous year for comparable, it will be at the same level as if bonus is issued in the both years. So this is what you have to do in case 1 when fund inflow is 0 but there is change in movement of shares. Now let us look into case 2 where fund inflow is not proportional to the change in number of shares. Example rights issue, how to account for the same. In the previous section, we had discussed about bonus issue where company does not receive any additional funds but the number of shares increase. Now in the second section, we will see where the funds increase but it is not proportional to the number of shares that the company is receiving. Let us take example of rights issue for this. Let's say there is a company, beginning of the year, they have 10 lakh equity shares outstanding. After 6 months, the company has issued one right share for every two shares held. Hence, 5 lakh right shares are issued. End of the year, company has 10 lakhs plus 5 lakhs. Totally 15 lakh shares in number. Now, the current market price of the share is rupees 50. What will be the general issue price of rights? We had discussed in rights issue chapter that generally rights shares will be issued at a discount from the market price. So, let's say company requires total funding of 200 lakhs. Total funding of 200 lakhs. How many shares we are, go we are going to issue? I am going to issue 5 lakh shares. Therefore, I will issue 1 share at rupees 40. 
market price is 50 i am going to issue at 40 therefore 5 lakh shareholders will pay 40 per share and the company will have a total inflow of 200 lakhs that is the money they receive now look at this instead of issuing right shares if company had gone for a normal market new issue fresh issue to new shareholders then they could have priced their share at rupees 50 given that they require only 200 lakhs if i divide 200 lakhs divided by 50 per share then they have to issue only 4 lakh shares so look at this guys for company requiring 200 lakhs funds they could have gone to the external market and issued shares at rupees 50 they could have issued only 4 lakh shares but in this case to receive 200 lakhs company had to issue 5 lakh shares so this is what i say when the fund inflow is not proportional to the number of shares issued so if i can break this further out of the total 5 lakh right shares issued what the shareholders have actually paid is only for 4 lakhs and 1 lakh shares are basically given them for free basically this 10 rupees discount so i can call this 1 lakh share to be the bonus element bonus element in my rights issue they have paid fully only for 4 lakhs and technically 1 lakh shares are issued by free to the company because they are paying only 40 rupees per share so what i have to do i have to adjust for this bonus element in my rights issue how do i do that let us see step by step how we will do that in the next section in the previous section we had seen conceptually what adjustment i have to make for a rights issue in computing the eps now let us see what is the formula and try to understand that the very first step is to compute the theoretical x rights price you have to compute the theoretical x rights price just like what we did in rights issue chapter small formula fair value prior to rights plus rights issue value divided by total number of shares exactly same formula what i explained in rights issue what we will do here is prior to rights one share was valued at 50 now i am going to issue one share at 40 so for every two shares which is valued at 50 for one share i have to pay at 40 totally you will have three shares when you simplify this you will get rupees 46.5 approximate number now second step is to compute something called rights adjustment factor rights adjustment factor now this bonus part is it there in the first six months or last six months first six months company has not issued any bonus shares and no rights shares only my second six months has rights issue of 5 lakhs out of this 5 lakhs 4 lakhs is paid for properly 1 lakh is bonus so my second six months has bonus and the first six months does not have any bonus issue what did we see in the previous section whenever there is a bonus issue give a deemed bonus effect to the previous year also where there is no bonus issue therefore in the timeline the second six months has a bonus element first six months does not have any bonus element so let me add the bonus element to the first six months that is what computing rights adjustment factor how do i compute this fair value of share prior to rights was 50 so take 50 which is the pre-issue theoretical x rights price which we computed let us let us round it off to 46 so you will divide issue price before rights divided by theoretical x rate price after rights issue 50 divided by 46 
we will end up with 1.03. This 0 0.03 mathematically is the bonus element in your rights issue. So, now what we will do? Opening shares which are 10 lakhs, which is outstanding for the first 6 months, I will multiply this with the rights adjustment factor to find total number of shares along with rights component. So, 10,30,000 will be the total shares for the first 6 months after including your bonus element. So, what you have to do now, for the second 6 months, second 6 months I will compute number of shares to be 15 lakhs. For the first 6 months, I will not compute it as 10 lakhs, I will compute it as 10,30,000. So, to compute veins, I will do 10,30,000 into 6 by 12 plus 15 lakhs into 6 by 12. That answer will be your weighted average number of equity shares which you take for purpose of earnings per share. Now, this is what adjustment you will do in case if it is a rights issue. Case number 2. Third part where funds are proportional to number of shares issued. Let us say in this case, Company issued 5 lakh shares at 50 market price. So, funds are proportional to number of shares issued. So, no adjustment will be required. All you have to do is normally compute your weighted average number of equity shares. Let us proceed to the next section where we discuss about diluted EPS. In the previous section, we had seen the concept of what is an EPS in various cases in computation of an EPS. Now, let us get introduced the concept of what is diluted EPS. Let us say we are in 2020 and in the year 2021 some preference shareholders will convert their preference shares into equity shares. So, let us see what happens. In 2020, Let's say the earnings is 10 lakhs and in 2021 also let's say the earnings is 10 lakhs. Now, in year 2020, number of equity shares, let us say there is 1 lakh. So, earnings EPS is 10, rupees 10 per share. Now, in the next year, some preference shareholders are going to be converted to equity shareholders because of the agreement of preference shares. Now what happens? Number of shares, denominators, equity shares in year 2 will increase. Let's say it becomes 2 lakhs, 1 lakh more equity shareholders, then the EPS will be 5. Now, this is going to be the future EPS. So, in this year, I need to prepare my equity shareholders I need to inform them in advance that in the future earnings per share will drastically decline because there are some securities that are due to conversion into equity shares. So, in 2020, I will report two things. I will report that earnings per share is only rupees 10. I will also report along with EPS something called diluted EPS as rupees 5 to indicate to my shareholders that in the future your EPS will dilute because of some conversion. What can be this possible conversions in securities? It can be preference share capital which is going to be converted to equity shares. It can also be debentures which is going to be converted to equity shares. Company might have issued some ESOP employee stock option plan to employees that can that can come into existence in the future so all these can happen so you need to inform your existing shareholders that because of potentially convertible shares in the future which can be converted to equity shares your earnings will decrease how do i compute my diluted eps for this, there will be a numerator and denominator. Your numerator starts with what numerator you considered with EPS and make some adjustments. 
Denominator also will start with what you consider for your EPS and make some adjustments. Now let us look at what those adjustments will be for your numerator and denominator. In the previous section, we have discussed what is the concept of diluted EPS. Now let us see how I compute the numerator for my diluted EPS. We start with the same numerator what you consider for earnings per share. What are the common adjustments? Let us say there are convertible debentures or convertible debt instruments. Let's say you pay 10% interest on debentures. Every year I pay this interest. Going forward, after I convert, this interest will no more be paid. So my profit will increase. Therefore, I will add that interest on convertibles. Now, let's say net profit before interest was 10 lakhs. Interest was 1 lakh. My actual net profit was 9 lakhs. And on 9 lakhs, you paid 30% tax of income tax. Next year, this interest will not be there. So, your net profit will be same 10 lakhs. Basically, 9 lakhs, add back interest 10 lakhs. So, now tax will be 30% on 10 lakhs. Because I am not paying interest, your income tax will increase. 9 lakhs into 30% will be 2 lakhs 70,000 and 10 lakh into 30% will be 3 lakhs. So, you are paying additionally how much tax? 30,000 which is nothing but 1 lakh into 30% and hence you will reduce tax impact on interest saved above. This will be your next adjustment. So, we have two adjustments. Add back interest saved, reduce the tax impact on interest saved. Next item, whenever you have preference shareholders and if preference share is going to be converted to equity shares, dividend will no more be paid to preference shares. So, I will add back my dividend to preference shares. Whenever you pay dividend, income tax has a concept of dividend distribution tax. I will add back that also. Sir, why am I not reducing tax impact? This is below the line. After this is computed, only DDD is computed. Hence, this does not impact my net profit which is taken for EPS. So, I will add back my dividend distribution tax. Any other items? which affects your profit due for diluted EPS, ESOP and those adjustments. These are the common adjustments which will come in your sums. So, after making these adjustments, you will find your profit numerator for diluted earnings per share. What is the denominator? Let us discuss that in the next section. In the previous section, we had discussed what will be numerator for your diluted earnings per share. Coming to the denominator. Start with the weighted average number of equity shares which you compute for EPS and all you have to do is add potential equity shares. Potential equity shares. What can they be? Let's say company is saying preference shares are going to be converted to equity shares. Compute the ratio. See how many new equity shares will come. Add it. Let's say debentures are going to be converted to equity shares. They will give ratio. For every debenture, we will give 10 shares. Do the computation, add it here. If company is saying they are going to issue ESOP, make the computation, see how many shares are going to be issued in the year and add it to potential equity shares. So, existing wins, add total number of potential equity number of shares and write it here. But there is one catch over here. You cannot totally add it here. You need to do it step by step. First, you need to see what is the impact of potential equity shares because of preference shares. Compute your total denominator, compute the numerator and see if your EPS is decreasing or not. After making this adjustment, if EPS is going to increase, then it is not a dilution, so I will not consider this. Next you see for debentures. Because of debentures, how much my numerator is going to increase, how much my denominator is going to increase. Check in the second step. Now, because of this, if your EPS is going to decrease, then it is a 
dilution in the EPS. So I can consider this. Similarly for ESOP, you have to see after adjusting only for ESOP, is your EPS going to increase or decrease. So you should not take everything together, take one by one. Which one do I start first? Which one do I take it last? There is an order. All you have to do is check the level of dilution. Because of ESOP, numerator will not increase. My profit will remain the same. But my denominator is going to increase. So I can take this first. Because of debentures, numerator will also increase. Denominator will also increase. Compute that ratio. Let's say that is rupees 2. For preference shareholders, compute that ratio. Let's say that is rupees 1. Whichever has the more dilution, take that first and then take the other item. How do I see the order? When you solve a sum, you will get a better idea. So this is about AS20 earnings per share and diluted earnings per share. We will discuss more about this order when we solve sums in the live class for you to get a better control of the same. Thank you.